ABC News, among others, but ABC News did a full frontal of this. Diane Sawyer introduces the segment, promoting four minutes, by the way, four minutes, four minute long segment on the world news program of ABC, a lot of time, a lot of real estate to promote her book and to talk about the fact that she may be a contender in 2016, someone who could challenge presumptive right now in the sense, Hillary Clinton. David Muir is the reporter. You're going to see right now that I'm not exaggerating. So see it, feel it, roll it. A firebrand is back in the news with a big alert for middle class Americans, the bedrock of the nation. It is now more than five and a half years since the recession began and Massachusetts Senator Elizabeth Warren has a bold claim that Wall Street bankers have made a disproportionate share of the money because the system is still rigged. ABC's David Muir sat down with her. David. Diane, good evening. As you know, we've been reporting here on the fight to save the middle class for years on World News. Tonight, the woman on the front lines of that battle, clearly not worried about who she's upsetting in her newest role. It is for these people of middle income. That it's long been part of the American dream, families hoping to secure their spot in America's cherished middle class. And she is the firebrand who's made a name fighting for them. There is nobody in this country who got rich on his own. A lot has changed since the last time we sat down with you. Yeah. Elizabeth Warren American is now a senator, and she's not worried about being a Washington analysis. insider. The game is rigged to work for those who already have money and power. Working families, they're not looking for a handout. They just want a level playing field. In fact, a new study shows the rich in this country getting richer since the recession. The top 1% now taking in 22% of income in this country. Warren knows those families slipping because growing up in Oklahoma, hers was one of them. So she can relate. Remember what I said about rational appeal, emotional appeal? 22%. Oh, who's been in office for the last five and a half years? Oh, President Obama, what policies have they pursued? They had both houses and the presidency. Yeah. Community reinvest, or excuse me, the Financial Protection Bureau, raising taxes, class warfare, going after those in the top 1%. You know that changes year in and year out. Wonderful piece. Couple things, real quick. The 22%, they paid 40% proportion for the taxes. So earning all that, but they're paying all that. Mm. Interesting. And fighting for the middle class. Tell me, how on earth is it that you have policies over the last five and a half years where you've seen the average income, median incomes shrink by $4,000, and you're promoting someone who signs off on these policies, saying that she's battling for the middle class? How is she battling? By advancing more government and doubling down on Government being the fixer, the provider. I'm going to give you some information on student loans that's going to shock you. She, she's talked about the discount window and banking. I'll get to all that. Just keep in mind that we talk about the top 1% and as if it's, a, it's there and it's set. No, the, the people are moving in and out of these quintiles. In fact, from an article... National Review Online, Kevin Williams writing about a professor, Mark Rank of Washington University and the co-author of Chasing the American Dream, Understanding What Shapes Our fortune, Fortunes. He spoke to the mobility, the turnover. Citing I IRS records, Professor Rank notes, quote, the turnover, and this is from his article, Kevin Williams, turnover among the super rich, the top 400 taxpayers in any given year is 98% over a decade. That is just 2% of the elusive group remain there for more than 10 years in a row. Among those earning $1 million a year, most earned that much for only one year of the nine period studied, and only 6% earned that much for the entire period. 
I just gave you the truth and the context, but hey, middle class warrior, really fighting for me? She fighting for you? Have I addressed the media bias yet? Oh, I will. Roll it. Those early fears driving Warren's fight years later in Washington to create the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau to protect families from the big banks. On the eve of her new book, A Fighting Chance, tonight she's revealing a meeting with President Obama after learning she would not lead the agency that was her brainchild. Most people, when they describe a White House setting as a version of hell, you would, you would assume would be members of the other party. <laughs> you wanted to lead this agency. Look, I never made any secret out of the fact that I would have loved to have stayed. The big banks had said from the very beginning they would kill this agency. And the president said to you it's because you make them nervous. That's right. That was his line. And did you buy it? Oh, I think he's right. I think I did make them nervous. Mm -hmm. Probably still did. She didn't lead the agency. Instead, she ran for Senate and won. And this was her first appearance before the banking committee. Settlements. And what I'd like to know is tell me a little bit about the last few times you've taken the biggest financial institutions on Wall Street all the way to a trial. Anybody? Um, I will have to get back to you with the specific information. So it's about prosecuting the, ba the banks. The banks. She's suggesting that the discount window open for the big banks loan should be applied for students not recognizing the short-term nature of the discount loan rate and the window not recognizing the collateral and the, and the fact that it's a short-term loan and she wants to apply that to student loans her attitude is best summed up and this was a wonderful piece from <laughs> this is great this is from legal insurrection talking about warren and her attitude and what she believes because she's talking about you remember bubbles right economic bubble we can talk about the fed and our good friend dr professor dimitrovich speaks to this econo class the book but he talked about the fed being responsible loose money policy and i would also mention it would be the community reinvestment act forcing bankers to make loans that weren't market wise by the way the, since the dodd frank passage consumer financial protection bureau it's very hard for first time homeowners to actually qualify for the loan now it, it it's interesting how those policies turn out but her attitude is to create another bubble which is beyond ridiculous but that said that's what she desires to do and it doesn't make much sense because she wants here here I got to read the quote for you because it is just that good um, it is if the Federal Reserve and here we go let me increase this so I can see it and I don't have my glasses so my apologies if the Federal Reserve can flow trillions of dollars to large financial institutions at low interest rates grow the economy surely Department of Education surely they can pardon me surely they can float the Department of Education money to fund our students, keep us competitive, and help us grow the middle class. She wants to create another bubble. She doesn't recognize the qualifications for those loans. This is very dangerous, quite frankly, but it goes into a narrative that we can all appreciate because, hey, the big banks, and they're always corrupt, and if that's the case, what we need is more government going after them and more control. That's worked out just great, by the way. And quasi-government institutions at the heart of the financial crisis. You might want to check that out. It's pretty interesting what we learn because it doesn't go into the narrative of class warfare, but actual crony capitalism. I'll get to that in a moment. Here's legal insurrections, William Jacobson, clinical professor of law at Cornell University. He's been on the show. Professor Jacobson responds to that as inflating the bubble. We have a choice. Continue to grow the bubble with easy money or try to wean the nation off the easy money tuition subsidies. Elizabeth Warren wants to grow the bubble more by making it easier for students to borrow more, more money by dropping the interest rate to that of charged banks by the Federal Reserve in what amounts to a giant class warfare non sequitur. 
bravo, great, great posting on Elizabeth Warren and what she does. But you wonder how President Obama got elected? Think about the fact that they've mentioned the five and a half years of the recession, what people earn. They go to the class warfare. It fits. It fits. And they're going to take it and they're going to run with it. Here's the close of the interview, portions of it. I can't make this stuff up. Roll it. And new numbers tonight. At the depths of the recession, 25% of families in this country said they couldn't break into the middle class. Tonight, that number up to 40% who say they can't find their place. She says she's not running for president, Diane, but she's clearly campaigning for the middle class tonight. Another point from Professor Mark Rank in his book, Chasing the American Dream, Understanding What Shapes Our Fortunes. He speaks to the fact that Americans will be, if we look at what the class system is economically, there's a great variation in income, more than Kevin Williams writes, than half of all adult Americans will be at or near the poverty line at some point, point over the course of their lives. 73% will also find themselves in the top 20%. 39% will make it to the top 5% for at least a year. Perhaps most remarkable, Kevin writes, 12% of Americans will be in the top 1% for at least one year of their working lives. They're selling you something that contextually does not add up. And they've done this before. It's obvious, but they spent four minutes promoting this, and they didn't take on these factors. They didn't challenge the assertions. They promoted the book. They promoted the idea of what she's selling, which is exactly what got us here. Listen, I got...